How we doing, guys? Doing well, Coach. Okay, guys, we've got Coach Houston on. Uh, so before we get the uh, coordinators, uh, Coach Houston has a couple things that he would like to uh, address with the media. So with that, we'll send it over to Coach. Okay, I just uh, you know, just want to jump on real quick before the coordinators got on here. I thought it was important to hear from me uh, first today. Um, you know, we all knew this year was going to have a lot of uncertainty uh, surrounding it uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, you know, we're seeing it all across the country uh, in, the, in the sport of college football. I think particularly with some of the news that came out uh, this afternoon that uh, I got when I was coming off the field about the University of Alabama. Obviously, there's, uh, there's things in Florida. It's just, you know, it's a different year, and, and we're all dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, it's not been easy to deal with, um, and it's a situation that we take very seriously in the way we handle it uh, and our protocols. Um, the big thing is I've been really, really proud of our young men uh, and how they've handled everything we're asking them to do on a weekly basis. Uh, obviously, it's not uh, normal. It's, uh, it's something that's, you know, it's in inconvenient. Uh, it's difficult at times, um, but they've, they've done a great job of understanding the process and really trying to do a great job of adhering to it. Um, we are dealing with some issues right now. And we'll continue to work through them as, uh, as the week goes on. Uh, we had another round of testing today, uh, so it's a situation that's still very fluid. Um, we've had two really good practices, particularly today. Uh, really pleased with the way our team practiced today. The, the energy, the effort, uh, just, you know, the, the, the performance, uh, you know, really able to, to uh, you know, correct some things from yesterday and really have a productive day. Uh, feel very, very good about where we are going into the weekend. Um, you know, we're seeing, we're, we're facing a very talented Navy team this weekend. Obviously it's going to be a great challenge, uh, but I feel confident our team's going to be ready to go. Um, not really going to discuss or get into who's available or who not, who's not available right now. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the group that we have on the field. We have had to make some adjustments, uh, but uh, those adjustments have, have been made and uh, are going to continue to be made. Uh, the staff is working, uh, you know, very hard to ensure that we're prepared for the game this weekend, uh, but we won't have a true picture until the end of the week of what, uh, of what our roster is going to look like. Uh, we knew it was going to be an abnormal year. Uh, everybody understood that, our players understood that, uh, and I'm really proud of the way that they've, uh, they've handled the adversity. So, any quick questions before I bring the coordinators on? Coach, I know you don't want to discuss names. Can you at least give us some numbers, the, the amount of people that are involved as far as positive want, tests and, and the amount of folks through contact tracing this affects? Well, like I said, you know, with another round of testing this morning, you know, it's still something we don't have a clear picture on. So we'll be able to have a clearer picture towards the end of the week. Coach, there are obviously some rumors out there about Holt's sure. status. Uh, can you just address his status and if he's involved in all this? Uh, there, there's no way you want to address any kind of rumor. And you know how rumors go, so you better be careful. Did he practice today or – did, did uh, quarterbacks practice? I'm, going, I'm not discussing any players. Uh, that's why I said at the very beginning of this thing, just want to get on here and address that. So, uh, any other questions? Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate thanks, your coach. understanding. Okay, thank you, Coach. Good evening. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good. I got to prop the chair up a little bit higher than Coach Houston had it. <laughs> make make right. sure you don't record that one. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll go ahead and open up the questions to Coach Harrell. Uh, Coach, obviously triple option week. I know you've got a lot of experience with it, but but what's this week like, or what's this week like from a preparation standpoint? You know, it's, it's in some ways it's like every other week. You just kind of got to get to focus on your opponent. You got to get familiar with them, what they do, how they, you think they're going to attack you. Make sure your kids understand the plan, know the plan, feel comfortable with the plan, and then go execute it and execute it with great effort and great energy and, um, you know, great execution and, and go from there. So it's, for me, it's, it's been very familiar. It's, just, you know, it's, a, it's a, what you're used to. It's kind of what you spent the last, I don't know, 12, 13 years doing. And now it's just getting our kids comfortable and used to it. And they've done a great job of that this week and just kind of, building on it every day and you can see them feeling more and more comfortable light bulbs coming on for them and and they're really playing fast right now 
I wanted to ask Blake about the linebackers. I and mean, when you look at Aaron Wren, Sir is kind of emergent, and then Dre Wilson. With, with their speed, those two guys specifically, how much of a factor could that be when you look at Navy's running backs and what they do? Um, it, could that be a big factor and help you all this week? Yeah, Ram Ramsier had a really nice game last week, and I, I kind of knew that he was starting to peak and starting to catch up with everybody else with the time he missed in preseason and uh, really come out and, and had a nice show in last week. And uh, Jaira's done the same thing. And, and both those guys, anytime you play a triple option offense, uh, you, your linebacker's got to be a big piece to that, and they got to be a big, big piece of, you know, doing their job and execution and, and make sure they do their responsibility. And uh, it's one of those games that th those guys are going to be involved in almost every snap. Coach, what's the, the single toughest thing about defending the option? You know, I, th I think uh, for, for some, some guys, you're, you're used to getting 11 hats to the ball. There's only one thread on a play. Uh, you, you think about the, the previous three or four weeks there, and you just, everybody gets to the ball, everybody gets to the screen play, the stretch play, whatever it may be. Now it's, hey, this guy does his responsibility to tackle the dive. Now this guy does his responsibility to tackle, tackle the quarterback. Now this guy does his responsibility to tackle the pitch. So you kind of got three different layers to it. So that, that adds a little bit of, of uh, uniqueness and discipline to it. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's a, you know, it's a football. Coach, I had a question as far as I know Coach Houston's talking about you guys been preparing for this game all along, for a long time now. I know that it's never easy with the option, but uh, it sounds like you guys have to be more confident knowing that you've been practicing this for a good while. Certainly. We, I told our guys we probably spent more time on this single opponent than we have uh, anybody on our schedule. And just because the uniqueness of the offense, uh, practices every day during fall camp and then every week, uh, spent some time on it with, with our players in practice, watching film with it. So it, it's been a, you know, a game that just because the uniqueness of the offense that you have to circle and kind of prepare for it all season long until you, you face that opponent. How was your first ECU victory dinner, and what did it mean for the players to get to participate in that over the weekend? You know, the big, the big thing for me is just seeing those guys and, and enjoying a win with those guys in the locker room, at the, at the dinner, wherever it may be, um, and, and watching them celebrate and just kind of glow up. And, and I think with when they go play well and get the victory, you can just see their confidence level rise. And that's pretty exciting as a coach and as a teacher just to see that as a, uh, you know, the confidence building those guys. Blake, what's your sense of uh, how your team will match up in terms of trying to defend the option um, in general, personnel-wise, with the guys that you've got uh, to use this this weekend? You know, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, just the guys, the way they've been practicing, flying around and, and fitting their responsibilities and how they play in the, the option. Um, per, personnel, I don't know if you're talking about our personnel versus their personnel. Sometimes it's more of can we be disciplined? Can we do our job against a triple option football team? They've got some some really good old linemen that come off the come off the ball, nice low low pad level. So we got to do a great job up front, you know, of, of taking that on. Uh, the 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 fullbacks are obviously they're leading rushers. We got to do a good job taking them out of the game, and as well as the quarterback in the pitch. So uh, at every level, you know, D line, D ends, linebackers, safeties, corners, we got to do a great job of fitting our responsibility and doing our job. Their quarterback, I mean, he can – he looks like he can throw it. But, you know, you look at last week, they ran it 60 times compared to two throws. I guess just how aware do you have to be as a defender of that ability to drop back and throw it when they can sneak up on you like that? Yeah, I think, I think the unique thing about a triple option is you're going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups and, and they're going to get you in those situations. So you got to make sure you're over the top of those guys. And, you know, at some point they're going to take their shot and you got to do a great job with your eyes and making sure that – when your guy releases, you're there to make the play. And the guys up front, when it turns into a, a uh, play action pass, we got to get to the quarterback. And um, like you said, he, he can certainly has a good arm, certainly does a good job with it. And if you give him an opportunity to throw it, he's going he's gonna to do that. Coach, I had a question as far as uh, with, with Navy. Uh, East Carolina's only beat Navy once. That was in Annapolis. Another thing is the Pirates have had a really hard time with a lot of points being scored in, in previous games. How do you limit the number of points this week? I know it's tough to defend the option and and big plays, but how do you how do you do it? Well, we you know I always tell our guys the big, the big thing we talk about in our locker room is don't look in the rearview mirror at the at the past years or past game or the last play. I always look out the windshield. That's the first thing we talk about is just 
hey, it doesn't matter about the past, whatever previous years, what happened, what didn't happen, uh, what went wrong, what went good, what went, you know, every, everything. And, and that's kind of the mentality we've been building all along. Um, but at the same time, you know you're going to get limited number of possessions against those guys, and you got to get some stops. you got to win the first down, put them in long guard situation, keep them off schedule, put them in second long, third and long. If, if they get you in second, medium, third and short, then they're in their comfort zone. That's where they, they operate best. But if you can get them behind the chains, behind the sticks, then you got a chance to get them off the field. So that's, that's kind of been our focus and, and what we kind of look at the windshield at. Any other questions? One final question. Uh, yeah, Coach, it's Bill Wagner. I'm with the Baltimore Sun newspaper. I cover Navy athletics. Can you talk about your relationship with Navy defensive coordinator Brian Newberry? He indicated that you all knew each other and had met through some clinics and talked. And I don't know if you ended up as his successor at Kennesaw State had anything to do with the relationship you have. But he mentioned that when you did take over, he – you know, had some discussions with you, maybe about personnel or whatever. But can you just talk about your relationship with Brian? Yeah, Coach Newberry, he's a, a great football coach and even a better man and a good friend. And uh, several friends on that staff with, with him, P.J. Volker and Kevin Downing, all, all, all great guys. You know, and Coach Newberry has been a good sounding board over the years. Just one of those guys you always uh, chat with, talk a little ball with, you know, get on the phone and discuss this and that. And uh, we went to uh, – when I got a chance, opportunity to go to Kennesaw State, and he was probably instrumental in, in helping me get that opportunity. Um, we, we certainly had some discussions about personnel and things he was doing there, and, you know, he gave me some advice, and it's, it's been really well, really good for me. So, I, you know, he, he, he's done a great job at Navy. He, he's, he's done really well up there. And do you feel like – I mean, the Brian Bohannon comes from the same option tree as – as Ken Niamatololo and Ivan Jasper, the Paul Johnson option tree. Yeah. You think getting to see that every day in practice helps you in particular when going against Navy because their option is unique. It's not the same as what Coach Houston ran at Citadel and Lenore Ryan. Yeah, I think uh, any time as a football coach you get a chance to see a certain offense every day in practice, whether it be spring ball, fall camp, or uh, it helps you be familiar with what they're, how they're trying to attack you or – uh, the things they like to do, why they do it, and, and maybe just understanding the offense. Um, you know, at the same time, we always have a saying that it's not what you know, it's what your players know. And that's the important part this week is we got to get our players to understand, uh, you know, our fits, our scheme, and, and what we're looking for on game day. So that's important. And they're doing a great job with that. And, and I'm really pleased about where we are at this point in the week. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks, Coach Harrell. Appreciate your time tonight. All right. Appreciate y'all. Hello, hello. Hey, Coach, how are you, sir? All right, wake up over there. Here we go. <laughs> All right, Coach, we're going to go straight into questions, okay? I figured we would. Let's do All it. All right. Hey, Donnie, this is Troy. Do you uh, envision Mason Garcia having significant playing time on Saturday and possibly even starting? This must be a big game. Uh, Troy's here? <laughs> he, he hasn't been here in any of these games on Wednesday. Is this like a really, really big game? No, no. What's going on here? Huh? Good to see you, Coach. You know, good to see you. Uh, you know, every game you prepare for everybody to be ready to go. That, that's what you have to do. And Mason has made a lot of progress, I would say, the last three weeks or so. Uh, you know, he got in a little bit at the Georgia State game. Uh, Wish we would have gotten him in there a little bit earlier. Wish we could have gotten a few more snaps out of him. Just that week, had he moved ahead to the number two spot, uh, he had an opportunity. The Alex Flynn's arm got a little sore. Alex had to miss about a week of practice. Mason came in, and with that work, really started to improve. So um, last week, we had him warming up. We were ready to get him in there. I never dreamed we were going to go on an eight-minute drive. You know, we were trying to, didn't realize we'd be able to do that. And unfortunately, we didn't get the ball back. He didn't get in. So I was hoping he's going to make a contribution in those two games. And you know what? When well, you teach them every week, opportunity knocks, you better be ready because you, you never know when it's going to be your time. And so I can't predict the future, but I think he is getting closer to being ready to answer that bell if he gets called. Coach Houston talked a lot about the situation you guys are dealing with. He didn't give a lot of details or information. There are a lot of rumors out there. Is there any discuss within the coaching ranks of whether this game potentially and how bad those numbers are could even be postponed? 
Uh, no, because I don't have those figures. You know, I, I go in there and get my nose poked all the way back to the what little brain I have. Uh, and then I just nervously wait till I get the email that says that, that I'm negative, you know, and, and, and glad that I am each week. And we get tested three times a week. Uh, we did test on Monday. Uh, we just tested again this morning. We usually don't hear back till the next day. So I know there's a lot of things going on. Somebody just told me Coach Saban had, had gotten it and I uh, wasn't really aware that Coach Bowden had been in the, uh, the hospital or whatever. So I'm a little behind <laughs> on, the, on the news part of it. But uh, every, every week we, we wait through that Friday test to make sure we're clear. And we're, we're worried that we're gonna go play the game because the other team. So, so you, you just don't know. I, I basically just uh, follow my last direct order try to be where I'm at, supposed to be there on time. Donnie, I think last year we asked you the same type of question. It comes up with Navy every time, but is the philosophy, do you air it out and outscore them and, and go big, or, or do you kind of play into time possession? You know, how do you balance playing offense against their offense, I guess? Well, first of all, you hit on it. You, you have to outscore them or you can't win the game. That's the only way to win the game is to outscore them. Now, you could outscore them three to nothing. You could outscore them 103 to 100, I guess. But you got to try to outscore them. Uh, the thing you have to do with with this offense is you have to make your possessions count because you're not going to get many of them. You know, uh, last week, I don't. What did we get? Three or four possessions in the first quarter, and uh, you, you get you get maybe three or four a half. You know, when you play a team like this, because they control the ball, they don't stop the clock very much. And, uh, you know, unless you can get some turnovers and then they'll go for it to, to them, third and short is, you know, great, or they, they like fourth and short. So they'll, they'll keep the ball. They, and so you have to make your possessions count. You can't turn it over, obviously. Uh, now, uh, I think we have to be aggressive, but aggressive, what's that mean? That doesn't necessarily mean throw, run. You have to kind of take what the defense gives you a little bit. You know what I'm saying? If they're playing pass, you got to run it. And if they're taking the run away, sometimes you got to throw it. So, again, we always talk about we just try to be balanced. Balance means having the ability to do either one well. Uh, the game kind of dictates. Uh, we, we, we didn't throw it as much last week, and we scored more points. Uh, that was good. Uh, the week before, we threw it 50 times. You know, you don't want to throw it 50 because you have to throw it 50. If we throw it 50 because we want to throw it 50, I'm great with that. That'd, that'd be good. If that's what they're giving us, that's what we got to take. That probably wasn't much of an answer to your question there. I'm sorry, but that, that's, that's what we do every week. <laughs> so I don't know. Ronnie, your offense continues to evolve on your end and uh, your improved running game, uh, yeah. throwing the ball well. Um, what's your general feeling about how your, your bunch comes into this week? Well, you know, in this business, it's just what what just happened. You know, it's what's what's happening right now. Uh, you know, we 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 had a nice plane ride home. I know that that was a great feeling. We enjoyed that. You know, I got home I think at two forty five and should have went to bed because I had to be in in about six hours. But I I sat there and enjoyed it. You know, what I'm saying I, I I had a cup of cheer and kind of watched all the the, the the scores and everything too and enjoyed that because I knew that was my only moments to actually do that because when you get there Sunday, you're back on the film and there's a hundred more mistakes you got to correct. And then you start watching the next opponent and they're pretty good. And so uh, we, 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 I thought we played pretty well now considering uh, in the central Florida game, but except we turned the ball over the ball security was just horrendous. Okay. So I, just, I really thought we were playing with great passion. I thought we were running the ball. Well, I thought we were throwing the ball. I thought we dropped some passes. We had penalties and stuff. So that's part of playing. So that means you did play poorly, but now at Georgia state, that was just, there was some issues there. And I, I said that last week that I didn't feel like we came out with the energy. We didn't come out with the passion. That's my fault with the offense part of it, you know, to make sure that they're, they're ready to do that. Uh, we had had good practices until Thursday. And then Thursday, our kids, I don't know, for some reason, we got off track. We didn't have great Friday walkthroughs, and I didn't feel like the meetings were good. Uh, you hope that, eh, you know, maybe you'll blow that off and we'll play well. We didn't. Uh, last week, we played really well. And, and I, we practiced well. Uh, Wednesday, we did not practice great on offense on Tuesday. We had to address that. We had to really, really uh, get after some people. Um, 
and we had to get it right. We had great Wednesday practice. Thursday was the best Thursday practice I've ever had in 30 some years. And then Friday and the Saturday morning, the walkthroughs and the meetings, you could tell the kids had, it, it hit them. They were ready to play. And uh, I thought we played about as well as, you know, you could, you could ask to play. This week, you know, it's a whole new week. Uh, we had a great practice today. You know, so that's all you can go on as a coach. Now what we got to do is have good meetings tomorrow. we got to have good practice tomorrow and hope we're ready to go play. This, this is a tough opponent. You know, defensively, they were phenomenal last year on defense. And I looked down and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They got eight starters back out of 11 from, from last year. I know they got off to a bad start against BYU. Uh, we, we didn't watch that one very much because that's not the same team we're getting ready to play. Coach, with Raji and Keaton, how, how much further ahead are they right now compared to your average true freshman running back in terms of just physicality and also understanding some of the stuff? Well, you know, I'd said, you know, I think one of these weeks that, you know, you recruit them and you, you say, well, you know, they got talent. You know, if you can judge talent, if you can't judge talent, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be in this business very long. You don't know how quickly, though, they'll, they'll be able to show that. And I thought early in, you know, in Central Florida game that, that both of those guys showed that, okay, this, the stage is not too big. And uh, that they're continue to show me that they they have the, the qualities that good running backs have to have. They know they know how to set up blocks. They know how to run behind blocks. Uh, they know how to find the holes. Uh, they both have good enough speed. You know, like I say, you know, Raji's the bus. I told you he's, he's the next Jerome Bettis, and uh, he's got unbelievable feet. And the thing is, wow, is he fun to be around? You know. A lot of people don't like practice that are probably great players, but he acts like he likes practice. That makes a coach's job so much easier. And also, I think we got a good tandem going there. Uh, you, you never have enough because they get beat up so much. I mean, you know, one guy's getting hit sometimes by six and seven guys out there, and uh, they, they get beat up a little bit. So, uh, you know, early in the week, they were really sore. They were really sore. But I thought today they, they were starting to look like they were getting game ready again. Coach, can you talk about Josiah Hatfield? Do you know when he's coming back? Well, this week, I, I expect him to be back. He practiced today, and I thought he looked pretty good today. We've missed him. We, we missed him from the very first game when he got hurt really early. Uh, we really missed him at Georgia State when the game needed somebody to go make a play, and uh, we, we looked like we were slow, and he's our fast guy. And so we needed that. We, we, we missed him. And then last week, he just was not ready. Uh, to go, we just, you know, a fast guy. If they're not, if they're not feeling good in the lower body and they can't run fast, that, then they're not very good to you. You know, what I'm saying a big guy, he can still be big. You know, what I'm saying he can still take up space, he can still block, still things he can do maybe. But uh, he's a fast guy, so he has to be a guy that feels good. Unfortunately, but today he looked like he felt good. He's catching the ball well, so we got to get him involved in the offense. You know, I know we've, we've talked a lot about, okay, we got to get Snead going, and Snead got going, got to get Blake going. All right, now how are we going to get CJ going? You know, that was the deal last week. I told you we're going to move him around. We're going to do a couple of things. We did do that. You know, we got him on an inside there. Uh, we put the tight end outside. They didn't realize we did. CJ so big, they probably thought he was the tight end, and they had a uh, safety on him, and that was a mismatch. So we get a 70-yard touchdown pass or so. Uh, we, we, we got him going. Now, he didn't have a lot of catches. But if you get two two touchdowns out of every three catches, we'll, we'll all be pretty good. So now there's still room to get one more guy going, though. You know what I'm saying? They're still there because defenses will take certain things away. And the more weapons you got, then the harder that job is for them. Donnie, how do you guys approach the rest of this week? It sets up to be a cool day on Saturday, but um, do you kind of recharge them for the rest of the week or do you try to go really, really hard? Or what's the approach? Well, the press box is always about 68, and I try to tell them to cool it down a little bit more up there, so it's kind of nice. So I'm not too worried about the temperature, but I hear it's going to be a fall-like day. I think our kids kind of like that. I, I, I'm thinking, you know, uh, we were really concerned in Tampa. We got there, it was 92 degrees when we got off the plane. We were like, oh, mm. You know, that's not very good. It was really hot when we got in the stadium. But luckily, the cool breeze and the humidity wasn't there. We didn't get that rain. And I thought our kids got excited about the, the little bit of the cooler air. So I think we've practiced well when it's been cooler. Uh, so I think they embrace that. So uh, we, we do want to practice hard in this, this program. We're going to practice hard. Uh, that's the culture we're going to go by. But we have had some discussions as coaching staff about the, the team that's freshest will have the best chance to win. 
And it's going to be a physical game. I, I don't know their offense that well, but I know it's physical. So I know our defense kids want to be fresh. I know that we have to be at our fastest. That could be our advantage against them. So we are, we are being smart. Coaches cut back some of the periods and some of the reps. Uh, now we're such a young team that, you know, that's not, not as easy or as obvious to do that because you need the reps. They need those practice. They need to see those looks. But uh, uh, we, we have definitely cut back a little bit. And I hope it's an early game. That's another big factor. You know, you have a little bit less rest. So you have to maybe dial it back a little bit on Thursday and Friday when you play at noon. Coach, just curious, how are you splitting up those reps at practice this week in the quarterback? You're, you're, you're going to keep going with that until I say something, aren't you? And what you don't realize is the head coach is looking right over my shoulder right now. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering uh, how the here's reps how we do it. We didn't, we, didn't do, we didn't do it any different this week than we always do it. Uh, the first quarterback uh, takes the reps with the first offensive line, and then he gets a few of the ones with the two. So we like to do things in six play reps, and then we re-rack it and kind of do a different couple of different field positions. So the first quarterback takes the first six reps, then he usually gets about two more, and then the second guy gets four. And then, like, uh, if, 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 it, if it's a scale drill or a team drill, we kind of stay with that a little bit. So uh, the third guy, he has to learn by osmosis. I mean, literally, he, he gets no reps except he gets the individual. And so that's what we always tell the, the number three guy. You know, you have to get all your reps mentally because we'd have to stay out here so long that the offensive lineman would be dead if we rep three quarterbacks. So only two guys get the reps, and the number one guy gets about eight out of every 12, and the other guy gets the four, and the third guy, he gets individual. Okay, one last question. You've been to – ECU victory dinners now under three different coaches. What does that mean to the program, and how different did it look with COVID this week? Well, COVID is not my favorite thing. I don't think it's, this is anybody's favorite thing. It, it's been a weird year. Uh, it's starting to feel a little more normal since we've been on a little bit of a schedule. The first game, literally, we were in the press box and kind of looking at each other and saying, all right, are we really playing a game, or is this like another scrimmage? because the warm-up felt that way because nobody was there. Uh, uh, so COVID's just been different for everything. Uh, I've been fortunate that we've uh, I've been here and we have had some good wins. Uh, you know, South Florida had been a problem for us. I think we'd only beaten them one time before. And I know we only played them like 11. I was there for that one. That was a good night in Tampa. That was another good plane ride home. So I remember enjoying that. And I think we've got the same little problem with the midshipmen too, that I think we've only beaten them one time. I was fortunate I was there for when we beat them up there at their place. So uh, we've had a lot of good wins here. I, I, I can't wait till we're getting those wins and the crowds here because uh, Dowdy Fickman's a pretty special deal. Greenville's kind of kind of a cool place, like after a winning football game now, you know what I'm saying, on a Saturday. So I'm kind of into those things. But uh, it'll be good if we win this game either way. I'll find a way. You know, it might just be me and Misty there, so that's bad for her, but it'll be good for me. All right. Thanks, Donnie, for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you.